Now I want to go over the setup of the camera and the tripod and I'm doing some things wrong on purpose right now just to kind of illustrate um, some of the points. So then here my uh, home studio also known as my living room. Um, I have natural light coming from the window right now. Um, this is obviously getting really blown out and a lot of light. Um, I also have the only light source besides the window is going to be my um, above the head uh, lamp that's on the ceiling and as you can see it's like making my forehead really shiny It's creating shadows under my eyes. So it's hard for you to see um, My eyes and it gives kind of uneven lighting So I wanted to just do this so that I could illustrate some of the points that we're going to talk about during lighting um, So I want to show you the setup of my DSLR. So with the DSLR um, right now I am videotaping on my iPhone and there is no um, hard lines. So I'm just using the onboard mic. So with that, you're not going to get as clean of audio. And again, I want to use this as an example. Um, so then when I do do the wireless lab and the hard line in lab, um, hopefully you can be able to tell a little bit of a difference. All right. So, um, with the tripod, tripods are going to be something that you can spend a lot of money on. And really that goes for all production equipment, but you don't have to depending on what you want to do. So if you're just doing a class, um, generally that's going to be straight to camera and the camera itself, and that's going to be the simplest way, is going to be static, meaning that it's not going to move. A lot of times when you have a tripod, you're really starting to get the um, kind of expensive ones when it comes to the ball bearings. So if you wanted a tripod to be able to pivot smoothly, um, you wanted to get those panning shots, uh, that's when you're going to get a really expensive tripod, um, something like a Manfrotto. But for what we want to do in creating digital courses, you definitely don't need that. So what I would recommend for a tripod, you want it to be sturdy, right? So um, there are tripods that they sell at um, you know big box stores that are like $20 and those are not great. Uh, I mean, if it's better than nothing because you don't want someone just holding it, uh, so you definitely need a tripod. But I would definitely recommend um, going to B&H Photo or Amazon. There's links on the webpage of things that um, I would recommend for getting something that's going to be sturdy, uh, but still at a price effective uh, cost point. So with this one, um, I really, really enjoy this particular tripod. And this is going to be a couple of things that you're going to want to look for in a tripod. Um, number one is that I can adjust this here. So as you can see, this comes on um, and this. So right now I'm at the maximum length of the legs. Um, depending on how tall you are, then you want to be able to stand as an option. So you need to make sure that whatever um, length your tripod is, is going to compensate for your height. So I'm 5'2", um, so this particular tripod more than compensates for my height. And that way I can choose whether I want to sit down or I can stand up during a lecture. It's going to be totally up to me. Um, other things that I found really useful in this particular tripod is um, having the ability to, um, I'm going to take this off, um, have the ball bearings. So here, and it's not going to be all that clear, um, let me just get a little bit closer. Um, so as you can see, I can turn this in 360 degrees. So this allows me a lot more flexibility in the kind of shot that I can get um, just with myself. So everything that is going to be in this little mini course is going to be all things that you can do completely on your own by yourself because that's pretty much how I do most of my shooting for my classes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this tripod all the way out. And whenever you do have um, a tripod with different abilities to adjust um, the length of the legs, the angle, um, especially with a 360 ball like this, you want to double check once you have your camera on that everything is going to be even because that can change, especially with the um, type of camera that you have. It's, it's a really heavy camera. So I use this. This is just going to be a little tiny um, level that I'm going to put on top of my camera once it's all set and I'm ready to go and I have my shot to make sure that it's not crooked. All right, so I'm going to grab my camera here, go off camera for a moment. Now, of course, with these videos, they're going to be really informal on purpose and they'd be a lot more polished for my actual classes because I would have all this setup work done before I start shooting. So I'm going to go ahead and just attach that to the screw at the bottom. Um, any high-end camera is going to have this tripod mount 
for it. Um, right now, I do have a tripod on my iPhone, and I just have this kind of little clamp that they sell for a couple dollars that, um, because there's no screw, obviously, on an iPhone. All right, so that is screwed in nice and tight. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it to my tripod, lock in everything. Um, one thing, I mean, your camera, especially if you're using a DSLR, is something you don't want to drop. So before you let go of your camera, you wanna double check that all of your screws are tight. Um, you don't want any loose screws. So um, I just do kind of a once over, make sure the legs are all the way out. Okay, make sure all my gussets are nice and tight. Great. Um, now that I, you know, let's say I set up my shot, I want it to be at this angle. Then what I'm gonna do is just take the nice little level. See, oh, okay, well I'm actually off just a little bit, so I'm going to just adjust that. Okay, great. So now the level tells me that my camera is straight. I know I'm gonna have a nice straight shot. So with the camera itself, um, I use a Canon T5i DSLR and no matter what camera you use, you're going to want to look for a couple of things. Um, one of which is obviously that the DSLR can have video capabilities. The Canon T5i is going to have um, up to 12 minutes continuous videotaping. So depending on the size of your SD card, and just so we all know what SD cards are, they're gonna be the little memory card here. Um, I usually run with a 32 gig SD card. You want to get as large of an SD card as possible that you can afford and what's in your budget because you're going to burn it up when doing video. So I just pop that back in there. Um, another thing that you want to look for is going to be a slide out LCD. So with this LCD, um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can show you. There we go. Um, so you can see yourself in the framing. This is going to be essential when you're doing production by yourself. Um, this way you can see, okay, I want to be a little over here, I want to be a little over here. Um, you can see to make sure everything's in focus. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to because you're going to be talking at the camera and you're going to see yourself. So if that is unnerving to you, then just play around with it. You'll get used to it and you won't fixate too much on it. But check in, you know, every once in a while with a little side glance so that you know that you're still in the shot. That's going to be essential. Um, not all cameras will have this um, little flip out ability because you want it to store back in there so it doesn't get broken. But having that flip out ability and this one has a touch screen um, will make it a lot easier because once you're in the shot, you don't want to run to the back of the camera. You want to get it get yourself placed, get yourself in focus, um, and uh, have that ability from in front of the camera. Um, this is gonna allow you to not need someone else to help you record. You always wanna make sure your lens cap's on, of course, when you're not using it. Um, I just used the standard lens that came with the Canon T5i. Uh, lenses is where you get into the really, really expensive stuff with cameras. And just the standard stock lens is great for what I do because I don't need a telephoto lens um, for everything that I'm doing to create courses. So um, with this, I would have um, my three-point light kit usually. Um, also with the Canon T5i, you have um, a, a cold shoe. Um, this would allow you to put a light on the top. Um, if you wanted to, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in lighting, so you could have some continuous lighting. And then of course it has its um, video recording capabilities and you press record and it gives you a uh, little signal when you're about to run out of your 12 minutes for the Canon T5i, although there are cameras that have a longer run time. So yeah, that's basically it for setting up your camera. Um, what I do in terms of workflow, um, I would set up my backdrop, whether I'm standing or sitting down, kind of get a placement of where I think I would want to be so I can get the tripod at the right height um, and kind of roughly get where I think I want to frame the shot. And then what I would do is get in front of the camera, then do kind of some final um, fixes with, okay, that's a lot of focus, or maybe I need to have a little bit closer or tighter shot. Um, or moving further away to get um, more of a long shot. All right, so great. And then um, make sure to check out the video on lighting. So it'll be a lot better lighting than this, as well as the video on audio, which will have better audio than this.